Moving forward in our example, if there were no errors in the connection with the ERP, we now want to get the list of materials. Therefore, we'll have to invoke the getList method of the external object corresponding to the material BAPI. We'll have to pass all these parameters to the method. Also, remember that the last ones are output ones. The second to last one will be the list of materials, and the last one will be the collection of generated warning and error messages, among others. The other parameters will be input parameters. In this case, they'll be almost all empty, because we don't want to filter by plant, distribution channel, organization, and so on. However, since we want to retrieve all the materials, we must load the matNR selection parameter as we did when we tested the method through the connector. Then, in our procedure, we'll define variables for each parameter of the method. As we see, there are the data types imported with the BAPI, plus a character data type of length 4. So, from the variable section of our procedure, we drag the structured data types and see that variables with the same name are automatically created. Okay, the parameters of the getList method are based on structured data types, but not as simple elements, but as collections. And so we must also indicate this in our variables. We're also going to change the variables' names to make our code clearer. In addition, we add the max rows variable of character for data type. Good. We already have the variables defined. Now before calling the method by passing these variables, we have to load the mat in our selection variable to specify that we want the entire list of materials to be returned. We see that it's a collection of items of BAPI mat RAM type. Because it allows defining several items with conditions, in order to apply them in the resulting filter. But we only need the collection to have one item. We'll have to define a variable of this data type, that of the item of the collection. That is to say, no collection. Then, in the procedure source, we assign a value to the properties of this variable. To the sign property, we assign the value i for inclusive, to the property containing the from of the material number, we assign the wildcard asterisk. And to the filter option, we assign CP, which stands for contain pattern. Finally, we add the content of this variable to the mat in our selection collection variable, empty so far, which will pass by parameter to the method. We also load the max rows variable with a string of four zeros so that it returns all the materials without restrictions. And now we're ready to invoke the BAPI method. We drag to avoid typing, and when we enter a period, Genexus automatically writes the only method of the external object. Also, it shows all the required parameters in an IntelliTip, highlighting the ones we have to type in each time. When the BAPI execution is finished, the mat in our list and return variables will be loaded with the collection of materials and messages respectively. We only have to program what we want to do if there were any messages. As we did before, we'll add them in the messages output variable. The return messages are loaded from the getList method of the BAPI in the return collection variable. So we'll have to run through that collection using a variable of the item's data type. We define this variable and do the iteration by assigning the values to the properties according to the data type of the current item. For the type, and for the sake of simplicity, we only set warning. We close the for, close the if, and save. Finally, in the procedure, we define the corresponding parm rule to return the collection of materials of the mat and our list variable, and the collection of messages of the messages variable. Next, we'll implement the necessary process to receive the collection of materials returned by this procedure and save it in the product table of our application.